Welcome back to Another World Audiobooks, a very special episode as we wrap up yet another book. Like I said last episode, I lost track of how many books we've done, but it's been a lot. If you haven't checked them out, make sure to go check out the backlist of Another World Audiobooks. We are wrapping up The Return of Tarzan today. It's been an awesome book, so much fun to read. I hope you've enjoyed it. I uh, love doing these characters and these voices and returning back to the primeval forest with, with Tarzan has just been a blast. What a ride all the way across Africa and all over the place. Thanks so much for listening listening guys thanks for sharing the show a huge shout out to our patrons thanks to mike corky etiosa and renee thank you guys for supporting the, sh the show through uh being a patron if you want to be a patron you can get some awesome perks by uh, going to anotherworldaudiobooks.com and uh just go check out the uh support the show there and you'll be able to see all the awesome stuff there's merchandise there's uh audiobooks you can get it's like all, all kinds of cool stuff go check that out and uh yeah let's get into it without further ado i give you the final chapter of the return of tarzan Chapter 26 The Passing of the Ape Man. The next morning they set out upon the short journey to Tarzan's cabin. Four Waziri bore the body of the dead Englishman. It had been the ape man's suggestion that Clayton be buried beside the former Lord Greystoke, near the edge of the jungle, against the cabin that the older man had built. Jane Porter was glad that it was to be so, and in her heart of hearts, she wondered at the marvellous fineness of character of this wondrous man, who, though raised by brutes and among brutes, had the true chivalry and tenderness which only associates with the refinements of the highest civilization. They had proceeded some three miles of the five that had separated them from Tarzan's own beach, when the Waziri who were ahead stopped suddenly, pointing in amazement at a strange figure approaching them along the beach. It was a man with a shiny silk hat, who walked slowly with bent head and hands clasped behind him underneath the tails of his long black coat. At sight of him, Jane Porter uttered a little cry of surprise and joy and ran quickly ahead to meet him. At the sound of her voice, the old man looked up, and when he saw who it was confronting him, he too cried out in relief and happiness. As Professor Archimedes Q. Porter folded his daughter in his arms, tears streamed down his seamed old face, and it was several minutes before he could control himself sufficiently to speak. When a moment later he recognized Tarzan, it was with difficulty that they could convince him that his sorrow had not unbalanced his mind, for, with the other members of the party, he had been so thoroughly convinced that the ape-man was dead, it was a problem to reconcile the conviction with the very lifelike appearance of Jane's forest god. The old man was deeply touched at the news of Clayton's death. "'I cannot understand it,' he said. "'Monsieur Thurin assured us that Clayton passed away many days ago.' "'Thurin is with you?' asked Tarzan. "'Yes. He but recently found us and led us to your cabin. We were camped but a short distance north of it. Bless me, but he will be delighted to see you both.' "'And surprised,' commented Tarzan. A short time later, the strange party came to the clearing in which stood the ape-man's cabin. It was filled with people coming and going, and almost the first whom Tarzan saw was day or not. Paul, he cried. In the name of sanity, what are you doing here? Or are we all insane? It was quickly explained, however, as were many other seemingly strange things. Day or not ship had been cruising along the coast, on patrol duty, when, at the lieutenant's suggestion, they had anchored off the little landlocked harbour to have another look at the cabin and the jungle in which many of the officers and men had taken part in exciting adventures two years before. On landing, they had found Lord Tennington's party, and arrangements were being made to take them all on board the following morning and carry them back to civilization. Hazel Strong and her mother, Esmeralda, and Mr. Samuel T. Philander were almost overcome by happiness at Jane Porter's safe return. Her escape seemed to them little short of miraculous, and it was the consensus of opinion that it could have been achieved by no other man than Tarzan of the Apes. They loaded the uncomfortable ape-man with eulogies and attentions until he wished himself back in the amphitheater of the apes. All were interested in his savage waziri, and many were the gifts the black men received from these friends of their king. But when they learned that he might sail away from them upon the great canoe that lay at anchor a mile offshore, they became very sad. As yet, the newcomers had seen nothing of Lord Tennington and Monsieur Thurin. 
They had gone out for fresh meat early in the day, and had not yet returned. How surprised this man, whose name you say is Rokoff, will be to see you, said Jane Porter to Tarzan. His surprise will be short-lived, replied the ape-man grimly, and there was that in his tone that made her look up into his face in alarm. What she read there evidently confirmed her fears, for she put her hand upon his arm and pleaded with him to leave the Russian to the laws of France. In the heart of the jungle, dear, she said, with no other form of right or justice to appeal to other than your own mighty muscles, you would be warranted in executing upon this man the sentence he deserves. But with the strong arm of a civilized government at your disposal, it would be murder to kill him now. Even your friends would have to submit to your arrest, or if you resisted, it would plunge us all into misery and unhappiness again. I cannot bear to lose you again, my Tarzan. Promise me that you will but turn him over to Captain Dufron and let the law take its course. The beast is not worth risking our happiness for. He saw the wisdom of her appeal and promised. A half hour later, Rokov and Tennington emerged from the jungle. They were walking side by side. Tennington was the first to note the presence of strangers in the camp. He saw the black warriors palavering with the sailors from the cruiser, and then he saw a lithe brown giant talking with Lieutenant Deonaut and Captain Dufran. "'Who is that, I wonder?' said Tennington to Rokov, and as the Russian raised his eyes and met those of the ape-man full upon him, he staggered and went white. Supristi, he cried, and before Tennington realized what he intended, he had thrown his gun to his shoulder and, aiming point-blank at Tarzan, pulled the trigger. But the Englishman was close to him, so close that his hand reached the leveled barrel a fraction of a second before the hammer fell upon the cartridge, and the bullet that was intended for Tarzan's heart whirred harmlessly above his head. Before the Russian could fire again, the ape-man was upon him and had wrested the firearm from his grasp. Captain Dufran, Lieutenant Deonot, and a dozen sailors had rushed up at the sound of the shot, and now Tarzan turned the Russian over to them without a word. He had explained the matter to the French commander before Rokoff arrived, and the officer gave immediate orders to place the Russian in irons and confine him on board the cruiser. Just before the guard escorted the prisoner into the small boat that was to transport him to his temporary prison, Tarzan asked permission to search him, and, to his delight, found the stolen papers concealed upon his person. The shot had brought Jane Porter and the others from the cabin, and a moment after the excitement had died down, she greeted the surprised Lord Tennington. Tarzan joined them after he had taken the papers from Rokov, and, as he approached, Jane Porter introduced him to Tennington. "'John Clayton, Lord Greystoke, my lord,' she said. The Englishman looked his astonishment, in spite of his most Herculean efforts to appear courteous, and it required many repetitions of the strange story of the ape-man, as told by himself, Jane Porter, and Lieutenant Dale Nott, to convince Lord Tennington that they were not all quite mad. At sunset, they buried William Cecil Clayton beside the jungle graves of his uncle and his aunt, the former Lord and Lady Greystoke and it was at Tarzan's request that three volleys were fired over the last resting place of a brave man who met his death bravely. Professor Porter, who in his younger days had been ordained a minister, conducted the simple services for the dead. About the grave, with bowed heads, stood as strange a company of mourners as the sun ever looked down upon. There were French officers and sailors, two English lords, Americans, and a score of savage African braves. Following the funeral, Tarzan asked Captain Dufron to delay the sailing of the cruiser a couple of days while he went inland a few miles to fetch his belongings, and the officer gladly granted the favor. Late the next afternoon, Tarzan and his waziri returned with the first load of belongings, and when the party saw the ancient ingots of virgin gold, they swarmed upon the ape-man with a thousand questions. But he was smilingly obdurate to their appeals. He declined to give them the slightest clue as to the source of his immense treasure. There are a thousand that I left behind, he explained, for every one that I brought away, and when these are spent I may wish to return for more. The next day he returned to camp with the balance of his ingots, and when they were stored on board the cruiser, Captain Dufron said he felt like the commander of an old-time Spanish galleon 
returning from the treasure cities of the Aztecs. I don't know what minute my crew will cut my throat and take over the ship, he added. The next morning, as they were preparing to embark upon the cruiser, Tarzan ventured a suggestion to Jane Porter. Wild beasts are supposed to be devoid of sentiment, he said. But nevertheless, I should like to be married in the cabin where I was born, beside the graves of my mother and my father, and surrounded by the savage jungle that always has been my home. Would it be quite regular, dear? she asked. For if it would, I know of no other place in which I should rather be married to my forest god than beneath the shade of his primeval forest. And when they spoke of it to the others, they were assured that it would be quite regular, and a most splendid termination of a remarkable romance. So the entire party assembled within the little cabin and about the door to witness the second ceremony that Professor Porter was to solemnize within three days. Day or not was to be the best man, and Hazel's strong bridesmaid, until Tennington upset all the arrangements by another of his marvellous ideas. "'If Mrs. Strong is agreeable,' he said, taking the bridesmaid's hand in his, "'Hazel and I think it would be ripping to make it a double wedding.' The next day they sailed, and as the cruiser steamed slowly out to sea, a tall man, immaculate in white flannel, and a graceful girl leaned against her rail to watch the receding shoreline upon which danced twenty naked black warriors of the Waziri, waving their war spears above their savage heads and shouting farewells to their departing king. I should hate to think that I am looking upon the jungle for the last time, dear, he said, were it not that I know that I am going to a new world of happiness with you forever. And, bending down, Tarzan of the Apes kissed his mate upon her lips. The End Ah, uh, what a happy ending. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed The Return of Tarzan. If you have, I don't ask for this very often, but if you've enjoyed this book, if you listened all the way through it, would you please be so kind, it would just make my day, make my week, make my month, if you would go and leave a review of the podcast. We have a lot of great reviews already on the podcast, but getting more just helps more people find it and decide if they actually want to listen to this podcast. And if you've enjoyed this, that's that, that would just be amazing if you could go and actually leave a review. Uh, you put a ton of time and effort into this. I love doing it, but it definitely is a labor of love. And your support through leaving reviews, through telling other people, through supporting on Patreon, through buying the audio audiobooks, buying the merchandise, all that good stuff, sharing on social media, just whatever you can do to help the podcast makes all the difference in the world because there's a lot of time and effort that goes into this. Like I said, I love doing it, but if you can help support the podcast in that way, it just tells me that this is worth doing and I should keep doing it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just knowing that, that you guys enjoy it, that makes all the difference in the world. So I really, really appreciate your support. And if you can do that, send me a screenshot, anotherworldaudiobooks at gmail.com. I would love to see uh, that. Sometimes I don't get notified when social media stuff and uh, I definitely don't get notified from reviews I have to go and check those periodically so if you can just let me know with an email that would be awesome I'll give you a shout out on the show thank you guys so much for listening and uh, yeah stay tuned next week we are coming at you with a brand new audiobook and I'm so excited about this one it's a secret I'm not telling you what uh, what we're doing there so stay tuned I might be dropping some hints on social media as it gets uh, closer so see if you can kind of guess what we're where we're headed here next I'm so excited about it it's going to be awesome uh yeah next week can't come soon enough but this was an awesome book love doing it thank you guys so much again for listening and uh sharing the show and we will talk to you next week with a brand new audiobook this is carl hi carl needs a website for his business i sell the world's finest flavored toothpicks but sadly for carl he doesn't know all the techie complicated website stuff so he's just out of luck and his business is doomed to fail in this digital age of um actually i got my website set up super fast and easy with invicta.services you what? Yeah, it was super easy. I just picked the style I liked, made a few quick, simple customizations, and bam, awesome website where I can sell my flavored toothpicks. Well, that's, well... Amazing? I was going to say, probably expensive. Actually, getting a website with Invicta starts at only $24 per month. $24 per month? That's less than what I spend on vocal creams per month. It's awesome. It gets you website hosting, a beautiful, professionally designed, customizable template, ongoing site maintenance, regular WordPress plugin, and template updates. I don't say this often. But, wow. I know, right? 
Invicta.services, the simple, affordable way to get a beautiful, professional website for your business. Just go to Invicta.services to launch your website today. That's Invicta, I-N-V-I-C-T-A dot services. Invicta.services, a professional website, headache free. And just for Another World Audiobooks listeners, go to Invicta.services and then enter the code Another World to get your first month free. That's right, go to Invicta.services and enter Another World as your coupon code to get an entire month free and get started with your professional website at Invicta.services.